My first guest I'm very excited to introduce, Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers is the chair of the House Republican Conference where she helps drive the agenda and communication efforts for the GOP in the House. She is the highest ranking woman in Congress and the longest serving woman in Republican leadership. She chaired the March for Life in 2015, and in that year was instrumental in bringing pro-life groups from across the country together to the House so it would pass the pain-capable Unborn Child Protection Act for the benefit of the unborn. As a pro-life leader and a mom of three, she's already a fan, and we are honored that she is here with us today. Representative Rogers, welcome. Good morning, and thank you. Good morning, everyone. I want to share my appreciation to all of you for being here for the 45th annual March for Life. Like previous years, it's really exciting to see people that come from all over the country, different walks of life, to come together to celebrate life. Together, we're reaffirming that every life is worth protecting, that all life is sacred, and that everyone, including the unborn, deserves their God-given chance to reach their full potential. The March for Life is, is the ultimate day to celebrate life, celebrate all that it has to offer, that life is truly where we find joy and hope. So I just want to most of all say thank you to everyone that's marching. When I see the tens of thousands of young people, moms, dads, and religious leaders, and others who are marching their way to the Supreme Court, I'm amazed at, and reminded that each of us has a story. And for me, that story is being a, a a proud mom of three, uh, including our oldest, that uh, Cole, that was born with that extra 21st chromosome. And yeah, I remember when we received that news, Brian and I received that news, you know, it wasn't what we had ever expected. And we were given a long list of challenges, uh, potential heartache that we would face. And now, 10 years later, Cole is just this amazing kid. He's working his way through fifth grade. He lights up the room. People are drawn to him. He's involved in Cub Scouts. He loves sports. He especially loves basketball. And we were quite proud on Saturday. He scored three points in the basketball game. <laughs> He's living a life full of potential. And stories like our families of kids beating the odds and reminding us are reminding us that every life is a precious gift. And that's why I love the March for Life. Every story, story is an opportunity for the pro-life movement to grow. And as online activists, you play a vital role in sharing them. It's not lost on me that it's a tall order. I remember the Doritos commercial that pro-abortion groups called controversial because it uh, featured an animated baby on an ultrasound machine. <laughs> Even language in the tax writing committee, when we were debating tax reform, we were, we were uh, seeking to expand the, the tax-free uh, savings accounts for college to the unborn, and that was, t that was called dangerous. And right now, the House is considering legislation to protect children that are born alive after a failed abortion. And the left, once again, is accusing us of joining the war on women. This rhetoric is keeping both sides from having an honest discussion about humanity, the humanity of the unborn, and it, it is only further dividing us as people. It's pushing the left and the right so far apart on life issues, it begs the question, how exactly do we break through and use this pro-life platform to bring Americans together, uh, particularly on the internet? How do we move past us versus them to foster those constructive conversations? I believe that the answer really is in going outside our comfort zone and identifying what ties us together as people and as Americans. Over the last year, I've held a, a number of unity dinners in my district in eastern Washington. And the purpose of these unity dinners are to bring diverse people together uh, to listen, put those cell phones away for a dinner, and to build trust even when we disagree. And I've been reminded through these dinners that everyone has a story. There are stories of hope and love. There's stories of deep pain and heartache. Every story is a chance for us to come together 
and develop a deeper understanding of one another. The shortest distance between two people is their story. And I believe that this marks an incredible opportunity for all of us. And I encourage you to keep up the hard work of telling the stories. Telling the stories of new moms, the medical miracles, the children with disabilities who are making a lasting in, in, uh, contribution to the world. <laughs> I, I challenge you to find ways to reach those who aren't yet friends of the pro-life community. Lead by example and think about how you can foster that welcoming, courageous conversation. You know, it's those stories that really have the power to open hearts and minds so that we can change the culture and change the culture to one that values life. That's how we're going to identify the common ground that unites us and will pave the way for this truly to be the pro-life generation. So it's upon all of us. And I thank you again for being here and may God bless you all during today's march and always. Great to see you. Do you want to take any questions sure, from be, the audience? I'd be open to any questions for the representative? Yes. Yes. Like, yes. It's been a great uh, support to us at Kids Keep Infants with Down Syndrome, yes. celebrating a 10th anniversary. We met here yes, 10 years ago and went to National Right to Life. And you've always been with us. Thank you so much for that. Um, I understand there's uh, two bills about limiting abortions to 20 weeks, that there's been a difficulty reconciling between which one. I has that been resolved? Well, we are, we're continuing to work on it. I was uh, um, proud that last Congress we were able to take that action. It was mentioned two years ago, I had chaired the March for Life and we, we had that same situation. The House has passed this bill in the past uh, to limit abortions after 20 weeks, a pain-capable bill, recognizing uh, that these are babies that are, um, can feel pain after this 20 weeks. Um, we're hopeful that we can get this language agreed upon by the House and the Senate that, that we could ultimately get this onto the President's desk. Uh, I'd, I also want to mention that today the House is passing the bill that would prohibit abortions when there's a baby that's born alive that has survived an abortion procedure. And again, it is our goal to have a big vote in the, in the House. It is legislation that has enjoyed bipartisan support in the past. So we hope that we can get that bipartisan support uh, in the House with a big vote and send it over to the Senate and ultimately get it onto the president's desk. Uh, we know we have a pro-life president, we have a pro-life vice president, and this is a time for us to get these bills that we've been working on for so long onto the president's desk. Thank you. One more question for the Congresswoman. Any other questions? Congresswoman, okay. thank you so thank much. You. Uh, it's another, here. I guess there are some of us here, special needs moms in the audience. We uh, cannot tell you what it means to have such intrinsic value brought to the work of the pro-life cause. So thanks so much for thanks. joining us today. Thanks, thanks, thanks for thank having me. Thank you. Us.